Hello, everyone, and welcome to a new edition of Low Code Cafe, episode 123. Today, it's a special edition. We'll have uh, an interview and a hands-on demo uh, from one of our customers, Anthony uh, Cadden. Uh, it's an impressive story that we like because uh, uh, he's a doctor by day and a developer by night, how I like to say it. So it's uh, very inspirational. Uh, but before that, uh, let me introduce myself and this event. Uh, my name is Bogdan Litescu. I am the founder and CEO of Plantanet. And this is a community event we are doing uh, every week, every Wednesday, same uh, time. And it's a community uh, event, so we present interesting topics. We share stories like we are doing today. So also, if, uh, if you have anything uh, uh, you want to share with the community, we'd be happy to host you and uh, help you spread, uh, spread the wonderful things you are building with Plantanet. Uh, this event is being recorded and uh, uh, there's already 122 uh, hours of very good content produced by this uh, event. So um, uh, I suggest uh, subscribing to the YouTube channel, browsing around, uh, searching, because we do a very good job at indexing these videos with, with a table of contents. So it's easy to uh, find uh, content on various, uh, various technical or, or uh, customer stories like we are doing today. Good. So uh, with that uh, being said, uh, maybe a couple of uh, words uh, to mention that uh, this, uh, this event today it's actually being uh, recorded, pre-recorded, uh, because Anthony is from Australia. Very difficult hour uh, for him uh, at this time. Uh, but Anthony will be in the local campfire on Friday. So if you're uh, if you are uh, new to this event, you should know that we also have a gathering on Friday, which is an open format. So uh, it's uh, it's uh, everybody shares, asks questions, uh, shares their ideas. And Anthony uh, Cadden will be present at the campfire. So you, if if you have uh, further questions, uh, join us on Friday and uh, let's uh, let's start the conversation. So with that uh, being said, uh, we'll uh, start the video. If you again, if you have uh, if you have comments or or, right. or uh, um, uh, questions, uh, put them in the chat. Put it in the Q and A. We'll do our best to answer at the end of the uh, webinar and uh, uh, defer some for Friday for the campfire. Thank you all for being here and uh, enjoy enjoy the interview on the demo. We're joined today in uh, the Low Code Cafe with a uh, guest speaker. Anthony Cadden is going to talk to us about his patient communication and management system. So, Anthony, thanks for joining us today. Thanks, Dale. Nice to um, get on here finally. Absolutely. It's, um, uh, you know, this is just kind of an interesting story that I've just come to, you know, to start to understand as we've gotten ready to do this, that uh, you started out and, and uh, you know, I mean, you're, you're an orthopedic surgeon, but also a low coder. So how does that happen? I've uh, been playing around with uh, computer stuff for a long time, ever since the Commodore 64, but just dabbling. Um, funny enough, before going into medicine, I worked in a computer store and built a website for ordering and made my very first JavaScript um, ordering system when JavaScript first came about. Um, but then medicine sort of taken over and um, gone in to be an orthopedic surgeon. But still sort of dabbling on the side, found out about the .NET Newt when it was first called iSpy, so I've been knowing about the platform for a while and then um, COVID came along and sort of gave me a bit of time to think about well what else can I do uh, to keep things going um, and it always been a thought about trying to improve communication that we have within a practice uh, because it's the one thing that seems to be um, lacking in having issues so so COVID gave you time to do that I don't know if you followed uh, you know, I have a little bit of a story. My my connection with Planton App started because of something I did in uh, uh, during when COVID hit as well. So I think that all that changed our lives. Uh, a, a oh, definitely. Of ways. Definitely. So, so what was your initial vision for what you wanted to accomplish? Well, the very first thing <clears throat> was something very simple, just a, a better way of being trying to communicate. Um, 
between me and my patients. Um, like after an operation, you'd be telling, I need you to do this, need to do that. It all came down to sheets of paper. It could get lost, they get confused. And then it's the whole drama of trying to call the doctor's office when you can't get through, having to leave a message, call back, they leave a message. Um, or patients would then actually end up in the hospital because something went wrong. And they say, I need to contact my doctor. And the hospital would go, no, we can't contact him because he's not part of our hospital. And there is no way the patient could then get onto me to say, hey, I've got a problem to then prevent that problem getting worse. So just like any other business, everything has an app, everything has an electronic way of communicating. Medicine still in Australia, the most secure thing that they think of is a fax. Mm -hmm. so well, that's how much of a, a dinosaur um, communication in medicine really is. So it sounds like you're leading the field. But <laughs> trying to. They, so just it's interesting. You're, so it runs the gamut from efficiency of communication all the way to patient outcomes. Yes. Interesting. So, you, so your initial vision was communicate better with my patients. Particularly uh, to start off with my patients to begin with. And from there, it's gone into, well, how can this be applied for anyone? And that's where the, so the scope and the scale has um, increased. So you're saying that your application is being used by other practices now? Um, that is, I've got one person up in Townsville in Northern Queensland. Um, I sort of flew up there and got them set up um, and they'll hopefully get started uh, this month. So, so that's the vision. I know, and and that's that's uh, interesting from a from a development challenge standpoint. It's one thing to think about um, an application for a company, but it changes the dynamics when you're talking about multiple um, multiple entities sharing an application. A lot more to think about. Not only that, it's that entity or that practice can use the same platform to say communicate with another practice related to that patient care. So instead of emails floating around and a new thread being opened up and how do I find that particular thing from that physio or that surgeon and now I've sent a file and that's on an email and that's been emailed down to someone else and that personal information is floating around in the ether, creating one secure platform uh, to provide that um, sort of space to work in, which just doesn't exist. So, um You've been using this now for a period of time in your practice, is that correct? Yeah, it's been uh, using it with uh, the patients that I've seen that I'm going to be following up. It'll be patients that I've operated on um, and having them follow up afterwards so that I can put their information about what they need to do afterwards. Um, and it's been quite interesting because I've had patients walk in and says, oh, I kept going back to the app to read what I need to do to make sure I was doing it right. Mm. So, so that's you give kind of a quality of, of information as well. Yeah, you sort of put it there in an easier way to access because bits of paper just get lost or it never gets given to them or it gets uh, placed into the bottom of a bag and that bottom of the bag that gets given from the hospital never gets opened up and the patient doesn't know when they're supposed to have their next appointment um, or what they uh, should be doing, what they shouldn't be doing. Um, and it all comes down to clear communication. That is half the problem where we see things um, happening and going wrong. So before we dive into uh, showing us some of what you've built, what, uh, how has this impacted your practice and your patients? Uh, for the patients that have been using it, it has been a bit of a shift of thought to think, oh, I don't have to call the practice. But uh, a lot of it, um, they're actually, once they get started on it, they don't get off it. They don't have to call the practice anymore. They can just get onto the app. I have um, push notifications working through a native phone. So they know when I'm getting back to them. So there's less of that hassle of I've left a message with, the, with an office. They're not calling me back. I've got to call again or I've got to call again. People are trained to wait for a ding on their phone when a reply mm -hmm. comes back. 
but they're not trained to wait for someone to call them back. Um, it also means that any sort of uh, conversation you're having with someone about a problem, they can always just go back into the thread and they go, oh, that's what the doctor said again. Or what did I, what did I write down for the patient? Because in most situations, you have a phone call with your doctor, he may write down a couple of notes, uh, you won't remember what he says, and then you call back saying, what did he say again? So to remove that confusion or miscommunication, that was uh, the bit that the patients are enjoying as well. And that's sort of, once I've got everything sort of teed up correctly, this is where the secretaries will start using it because a lot of the time it'll be passing an instruction from the doctor through a secretary back to the patient, but why can't the doctor just type it down? The patient then can clearly read it. And if there's a question over it, when they type back, the doctor can look at it and say, no, 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 this is what I really mean, because now you can understand the wording instead of trying to understand someone over the phone. Right. You had it, you had uh, indicated that you looked at some help desk kind of software as a, as a potential for this uh, to start with. And it sounds like um, you rejected that pretty quickly. Well, it was sort of finding something to prove the concept to start with. So it was uh, one of the like help desk module that existed on .NET New and placing it on to then have it for one practice, it kind of worked okay, but then the display on the screen, particularly for a mobile, it didn't really work. And when you speak to the developer, oh, well, we, we can't really change that. Um, and if I wanted to make the recording information secure, it'd be, oh, we have to rewrite our program to put that into you. And then if I wanted to expand the concept of, well, if I want to use the one platform for a patient to communicate with multiple different platforms or providers in the one space, then you're having to create a multiple copies of that module in multiple different pages. But then it was then, how do you then modify it or add in another component? So that's where I came across the, uh, initially the uh, the DNN Sharp modules, and it had the sort of the uh, the app suite, um, and then looking more into it, and that's when you guys have started to come with the Plant and App platform. Mm -hmm. um, made a call to Bogdan, and he showed a couple of medical sites that had been made with it um, already. So then sort of had a, uh, a play around with the platform. And although when I first got started on it, it's like, well, it's just empty. There is no pre-made that you put something up and it's already done. There's no sort of form already made or there's no communication part already made or an appointment form already made. It's like, oh, no, you make it from scratch. So that was all the bit daunting part. So that's where I engaged the plant nap to begin with. But the beauty about it, instead of a traditional coding way, you say, can you do this? They go away, they write something, and they come back and say, well, this is what we've come up with. And you go, no, I don't like that. Can you modify here or here? And then it'll be taken away. Um, working with um, Elena and Delia, it'd be like a weekly call. Oh, well, can we change this? And they would lift up the hood and change some figures around and close the hood back down and go, okay, is that what you want? And I said, well, it's getting pretty good. Um, so you're saying was, working with our implementation team, uh, some of that conversation was just on the spot. It was, we we had a small concept and then as we changed, we'd sort of create some diagrams. It wasn't the usual six months of pre-planning that you have to do for a project. We kind of spent maybe a few weeks creating some flowcharts to then give to the initial team to then start working with. But then as we're going through, we're, like, oh no, we need to add this part on, or can we change the, this? And the ability for me to then see how they were doing it and learn at the same time was um, for me a bit of a godsend that I could learn how to program without having to go to university. <coughs> but so, but, so uh, you you stayed intimately involved in in I mean, you not only saw what the the impact of what was happening, but also could understand how it was happening. I wanted to know how actually to do it. Um, that was the ultimate goal. I, Bogdan said to me in the beginning, oh, we can give you a little bit of training, show you what to do, and then you can go for it. So I don't know what to do. But having them work on it, um, 
And the advantage of knowing a bit of programming, but also the medical and being able to then can, it's like a, being a translator from the medical world through to a programmer who knows nothing about how a, a practice runs. So I had to sort of sit down and describe all this to them. Um, this sort of platform allowed that sort of simplicity of change, like sort of telling them what I need them to do, but either creating a short little, well, I played around and they kind of did this and this is what I wanted to do. And then they could take it further and say, okay, well, we've taken with what you want. Uh, we've tied it up. We've had that extra functionality in, but then as they do that, you're learning, well, that's how they do it. You can see how it was done and then make up a whole new section by just picking up and moving over, creating a new page, form or grid, changing the way the buttons interact with each other and away you go. Makes sense to me. Well, let's, uh, if you are willing, let's, uh, let's take a look at what you've built. Yep. Uh, where we, let's do a share screen. So as you can see, we've got uh, two different parts to it, and this is only a small component of it. This is um, a patient interaction part, and then what we see from uh, practice. Um, we've tried to sort of give it that sort of app feel where you've got your dashboard, where you can see things going on. So a secretary can come in and see the different, um, anything that's come in. Um, and where we've got this concept of either unread or unactioned, one of the biggest problems that when you're running a shared email is that someone could click on a, a message. Uh, the email program says it's been read, but no one's actually actioned on it and then it just drops off. Mm -hmm. So, and then we've created a little um, priority. So we know that this one's over a few weeks old compared to something that's only a week old. So you've got a bit of a traffic light to know, well, these are the ones that haven't been replied back to. I better get back on top of it. Um, incoming files, um, we're able to see things that people need to get done before their next appointment. Um, with the ability of, I wanted to be able to say, hey, has this one been done? Click it off, or I need to send this person a reminder. That will then send a reminder through the, um, and that was my phone just giving me a notification that I need to get my x-ray done for today. Okay, so, that so you, you, you're doing push notifications right to their phone. Oh yeah. With that, yeah, okay, nice. Does it, um, does everybody interact with you by phone or is there alternate paths if they don't want to do a phone? Um, I've, most, of, most patients, because of COVID, everyone's had to get a smartphone. Mm-hmm. Um, and over here, everyone had to be able to use a QR code to get into a building, fill out a form, download an app. So even 70 year olds surprisingly have been trained to use a phone. And when they come in for the appointment, you go to write, or oh, well, let's make your next date. Instead of giving them a card, they pull out their little phone and say, I'll, I'll pull out my calendar and put a reminder on my phone. So a lot more people are becoming tech savvy. Anyway, so, so uh, you kind of rode the wave of, of what they were already doing. You don't have, you didn't have to force them I to didn't do have to train it. Yeah. I didn't have to train anyone how to use an app. I've just tried to have it as appy as everything else out there. So this feels intuitive as to how to use it. That's why it's taken us quite a while to get to this more current look. It is amazing to, that everyone's wandering around with a, with a computer in their pocket. Um, yeah, there, it's quite interesting. There's a few patients who won't use their phone. Um, and I had one particular lady who then just went to her PC and used the, uh, the platform, as you can see on the right hand side, to then communicate back with me about her foot operation, but she didn't use her phone, but she'd get onto a computer. So she was quite happy to do it that way instead of calling up the practice. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it is a bit of a, a change in thought because every other business you use something like this, but not for a doctor. So that's part of the challenge in changing a mindset, not really for the patients, it's more for a practice because it's a change of what they would normally do. Um, but as you can see, if you can automate things where um, a patient of practice doesn't have to then get onto a phone, 
It's just as simple as a click button to say, remind the patient to have their x-ray done before they turn up for the appointment. Um, and the same thing can be done um, about the uh, uh, appointment as well. So just to sort of trying to automate the, the process for a, um, a practice. Uh, but from the practice side of things, you're either seeing, you can see the, the different types of messages. Um, um, and then if I bring up, so if I go into, and so from a patient, it's as simple as, here's the, the last message that sort of came through. And chats. There we go. So that's where I've implemented the um, that sort of click cell uh, function that are placed up on the campfire, so that on a mobile phone they're not looking for a button to press; they just have to press on the screen like a normal app. Mm -hmm. Have a conversational thread. Um, and then I can just reply back to the um, practice. So that's if someone was just seeing on the, the screen and the patient can actually you then use the same thing to on a phone to take a photo. So I've got patients who will take photos of their wounds. And so mm -hmm. okay, I've had my stitches out. And so it allows me to then even manage patients away from where I am in um, Wollongong. And there's a message then being going. There's a response um, coming up. And oh, it won't come up here because there we go. We actually built a Chrome extension um, at the same time so that the practice can get a notification come through without actually having to be sitting on the screen at the same time. Interesting. Um, so that can be for patient messages, practice messages, um, if we had an appointment request come in. So patient practice will still run their own practice management software. And normally if you've got an email, you've got to go in and out of the program. I want to simplify that. And it was just a concept from a, um, a phone system that I had, which had a similar sort of thing that would pop up to say you have a phone call coming in. So I had a couple of um, local guys um, build this Chrome extension for me. The most interesting thing is about the extension, the two guys worked for a major bank and they're doing this on the side. As soon as they saw the platform, they were going, I wish I learned how to do that instead of what I learned at university. <laughs> <laughs> because here I am being a non-programmer putting this together and they're trying to work with Java and create, uh, like spend thousands and thousands of dollars on a simple screen and here I am just modifying it in, the, in my backyard. Um, Absolutely, it is a huge, a huge tool. So, I think you can see like I've, I've, I've moved away from also using, it's funny enough, uh, the tabs. So as you can sort of see here, we've got uh, a scrolling section. This is a customized skin that I had converted over. Um, and I've been moving everything so that I've got tabs within tabs, but not actually using uh, the tabs um, module. Um, so people can have instructions, I don't think I've got um, instructions for this person yet, but as, as setting up with someone with an instruction can be as simple as going into the little patient section. Finding the, um, the patient once, so it's like a, a, a CRM for patient management. Mm -hmm. So from in here, I can do everything in the way of uh, the messaging, managing upcoming um, events. And again, if there's any files, I've got the one place to find it all. If they've got tasks, I can find everything in the one place and then um, with the instructions. 
I'm not sure whether or not they're coming up with him. But this is where I can provide the instruction for a patient and it is simple as going through and making a using a template to make a new instruction for a patient. Sure, and so that's saving you time in the process. And so everything's templated within the site. So I've already had, so this is where the instructions already put all the different sections together and using um, the plant nap to then manage all this sort of stuff in the back end. So since it's all templated, you can either quickly edit it or do some pick and choose. In, yep. So, and for the, so the templating, it's just, um, all that is a whole section in itself. And there's our instruction that's come up for the patient there already. The reason why the others weren't displaying because I hadn't uh, set them as finished. They are only sitting there as um, drafts. So it gives you the option to modify, edit. Um, um, we can sort of see our instruction here and it's making use of a slider so that using diff lots of different components. So someone on the phone can just slide from side to side. But then from a practice, they can also look at another part to see has someone actually read their instructions on them. So everything this gets, gets logged in the back end um, at the same time. And that can be part of HIPAA compliance or other sort of uh, security compliance, but it's also for a practice, they know if someone's doing what you need them to do. Mm -hmm. um, you can see we've got messaging uh, templates. Every time a message goes out, we don't have to type it in. It can just be pre-done using tokens to fill in the information from um, the appointments, names, um, we can do it for tasks, uh, templates for instructions, um, even down to um, equipment ones as well, which is that one. So for me, I can have a series of kits. So as I create a, an appointment, uh, that all gets sort of dropped in. We've made diff use of different components. So it's gone from just using so the calendar part of um, uh, the grid to incorporating different components. So we did have the full calendar component to start with. This is now this Brighton calendar. Um, so I can sort of uh, either edit appointments, uh, manage their um, bits here. Um, and that can be all the different parts, such as the, uh, allowing us to have notes on the appointment, Seeing related tasks. Another thing is our referrals, because that's always sort of running out. Um, but then also uh, managing um, upcoming procedures through the same um, platform. So you mentioned the, the calendar you've integrated with, was it Brighton, did you say? Yeah, so we firstly, instead of just having a simple uh, table, sorry, which was a display of today's appointments. Um, we was, this is what we originally sort of concept to start with was just, okay, here's a list, but it's sort of, okay, well, we want to have a, a calendar. So we first came across the, the full calendar, which I think is used as part of the calendar part of the listing. Um, that was firstly used until I came across this other one, which allowed sort of resources, um, a few different things so you can display more of uh, an agenda view. Um, but then the coding of this then had to be, it was initially done uh, by the, the plant and app team, because it did require a lot of different JavaScript uh, calling back to APIs, so that when we're doing something, so if I've got this appointment here, the calendar allows the ability to drag and drop. But as it's doing that drag and drop, there's now a whole automation process in the background that 
this patient here will then get a notification that, hey, the appointment's been moved, instead of the, uh, a secretary having to get onto the phone and saying, your appointment has been moved. Mm -hmm. So it's, and I know Bogdan sort of talked about that on a recent cafe, was trying to automate processes, uh, which I'm trying to do for the, the medical field. Because that process in itself of moving an appointment could take 10, 15 minutes for a secretary to complete by trying to then get through to the patient and say, we need to move you to later on today. And then if the patient then gets that through and that's me getting a notification, they can then use the same platform to get back to the practice and say, oh, that one uh, doesn't work. Can I try for a different time? So that was the notification. That's the automatic notification of the removal of the down the bottom. So that ex that um, calendar, the, the Brighton calendar, it, it's gotten wired to um, the, the, you use JavaScript. To, so it's wired in the same database. It's just a yep. a. a, a, a um, this is provided looking at and working at working yep. with the data. So we can do drag and drop if we need to um, make an appointment. Um, it's simple as clicking on the spot and choosing either to make an appointment or say make a procedure. If you want to make a procedure for this particular test patient. So I can see that dropped from a you I mean you clicked on the calendar and it's dropped into a into a form into a more standard form yeah so we have we have the sort of slide outs this form then comes in from um, behind and just like any time you try to type and it always gives you <laughs> um, but then with this again to automate the process I can select the hospital, I can even select um, a NIST test and say, oh, I now want to add equipment. I can add in equipment for my um, operation. And as I'm adding in that information, it is then notifying uh, the company that that information and that kit was required for that operation. So you're doing two or three things at once. Yeah, so normally said for a process of booking an operation, I'll be writing all this information down on the form, which you've got to give to the hospital. But then the hospital can't do anything until they get that form so this is where it's even sort of expanding out that I can then notify a hospital as I'm putting this information into the database that, hey, I want to do this operation in two days' time or two hours or three months' time. This is the equipment I need to do. But this, the instead of waiting for that form to get through to admissions and then 20 admissions to put into a computer system for them to be printed out, to get to someone in theatre, to then look at what needs to be done, then they need to contact the company it's all been done within a minute. Mm -hmm. Which then helps with device companies on logistics and trying to get equipment because it's not normally that this stuff sits on the shelf of a hospital. So then it turns, this platform's now gone into logistics management mm -hmm. from just starting with patient communication. So from a, uh, just thinking about your app overall, are, are, are there pieces that are, that um, were either bigger challenges to solve? I mean, the, what, what, we ju what we just saw, the idea of being able to do sub, uh, several things at once is uh, obviously has a big impact to, to your practice. Just wondering what kinds of things, uh, what, where the challenges were and what you put together. Um. I think the challenges was uh, just the time to put it together. Um, I don't have a, a big development team. After I finished off with the planting app, they gave me all the, uh, you can say all the different recipes, the um, ingredients, 
um, some very basic cookbooks and then I've had to, but a lot of this stuff was made from before, but on a previous skin, that's where we sort of had a bootstrap three skin and then it's just been a bit of time for then bring it over into the current one. But a lot of this concept was made. So all these bits about, oh, how do we then notify this person, notify that person? You could say we had a sprint with the developers to put all that together. And then I've just spent the time to then go through, going through each of the parts going, oh, okay, they've left out a little bit here. So that wasn't filling in the database correctly and fixing that up. Or oh, I need to change the look at the screen to where we are now. And that's what I've been working on. So all the hard work uh, sort of the difficult part, which I wouldn't know how to sort of put it together or how to link all one table to the other and do this or do that has been done. Mm -hmm. But now it's just the taking it and going, oh, can I tweak it? And yes, I can, because I can see how it was done with another section. The challenging part is then trying to, again, change the, the way people think that this can be done in a much more streamlined fashion. And it's not that I'm getting a lot of, oh, no, we don't want to change. We don't want to change. The concept of change is great. The people think, oh, it needs to be that. And I'm sure that you sort of see this before. It's the so-called integration with the existing systems. But the problem with that is most of the existing uh, practice management systems don't have an easy way to integrate with. So trying to reduce the amount of work on my side so it doesn't seem as a where we're doubling up our work by having to put it into one thing and then do all this other work on another thing. So that's why it's reduced down to simple clicks. You're not having to do multiple steps to do individual functions. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the, the things I like about the platform is that you can then introduce that automation or you put it into, say, all the information into a JSON, push it into a table, and you run as an automation in the background to do all that, the heavy work after the, patient, the, the practice person or the patient's moved on to the next part. They're not sitting and waiting as you notify everyone. That all occurs in the background. I was going to ask what, what uh, ways that you used the automation segment of this. So... Yeah, the sort of just even with say a reply to a message um, where it goes to do this sort of say a push notification instead of following through the steps and saying hey, we're going to do all this before that form has been completed. Uh, I've taken the and I think he sort of started to do a few things on campfire and saying, well, these are the things I need to get done now. These are the other bits that need to be filled in. So I'll sort of create a little file push that over into a, uh, another database table. You put a trigger on to say, well, that database is then being updated, run that trigger to then fill in the rest of the stuff for the record. So who's able to access it, who gets notified, um, what other changes need to be made through the database so that someone can reply, click, and it, it sort of seems fast from their end because a lot of the heavy lifting is then automated um, on the backside. Mm -hmm. um, well, I have a question. Even, Go ahead. Yeah. Well, the other thing that I've been uh, working on as well is instead of using uh, lots of forms and grids, it's then sort of creating my own thing called action action tokens. So if you look at the, the first screen here, the navigation here, that is not a form. That's a, a token that's been placed into the page. So I have workflows which then make that particular uh, um, navigation for this page. The same workflow will then do the navigation for this page here and the navigation for underneath. And, and that was the question that I almost lost. I was uh, wondering about how you how you uh, in, incorporated workflows into. Uh, I've got over two hundred workflows um, in my site. So I've got workflows related to the skin. So even this um, the part here to display these cards instead of oh I've got to program that into a form. 
again, this is just take, taking the code from the skin that I've had, modifying it, placing it into a workflow. So it's then sort of speeds up that process. Um, anything related to a form in say, oh, I've got to make all these changes. I've moved a lot of that logic over into a workflow. So then it's easier to then use that workflow elsewhere or say, oh, I'll, well, I need to modify it to do another function. It's just simply cutting and copying rather than, oh, I've got all this information to form. Now I've got to move that to another form. So uh, when workflows came about, I've been making quite extensive use of the, the workflows. So one of the main takeaways that I get from this is that the fact that you're so directly involved in the process impacts the final product. Yep. Uh, and uh, both in, in terms of approving what other people are, are, are doing on your behalf when you explain it to them and do it, and then you're getting right in and, and doing it so you see the you, uh, you imagine it, you do it, you uh, maybe have to try two or three times, but then you get the exact um, result well, my, that you're after. My analogy is I get a hammer and I keep hitting the screen until it works. <laughs> and eventually it's like, oh, it works because I forgot the comma or I forgot the colon or I forgot the end bracket. Um, so it's instead of again normal programming where you get a, like you sort of watch where people have to compile it and upload it the fact that you can sort of lift up a hood and sort of change the wires around and then you figure out well i should have cut the blue wire not the red wire um, and not explode the site at the same time that's the then one of the enjoyable parts of working with the platform is that i can get in um, and you learn by trial and error without breaking things. Yep. And that leads me to uh, uh, just a question generally about the platform. You, you, um, you understood kind of, um, you, know, you had a vision about what this was when you started. What, what do you, <laughs> how's your, how's your perception of the platform changed and, and, uh, um, well, at the beginning, when you sort of had that sort of that the basic capabilities to it before sort of things like the workflow, so this is the collection of modules. Um, now I see it as a complete solution in itself where everything sort of seamlessly talks to each other instead of oh, I've got a module here, I've got a module there. You sort of just know it's that's the bit that displays it on the front, but everything's tied in um, quite nicely. Um, so like, I make use of APIs a lot throughout the site um, and the APIs are used for a lot of the caching so um, I'm trying to utilize every single um, part of uh, the platform instead of just oh, I use a form I use a grid I'm making use of everything within each individual component So along, I, I took a quick look before we got together today and saw that you uh, have posted a number of questions on the community forum, but also that you've responded to another, a number of other people's yeah. uh, community posts. And so as, as head of support, I certainly thank you for that. It, the, the contributions, uh, I think, help uh, help others in their path, in their journey. and. You know, I noticed too that you have a, a great habit of, of when you discover the answer to something, whether you've posted originally as a question or not, you, you close that close that loop and uh, put it out there for others to see. So that's very neat. I, I was just wondering what uh, what value you get out of the community um, aspects of of Montana. Oh no, it's, it, the only hassle for me is the time zone difference, so I can't get on to the, the Friday night campfire all the time. Um, it's normally like the middle of the night here, but the the fact that you can sort of post and you get a response um, or someone's come across the same problem, um, it's good that I'm not sort of working on this alone. I sort of have that community to work with. 
yes, I still got um, access through to Plant and App uh, with a success manager. Um, but sometimes the community, I get a, a, a quick response, uh, especially with um, a few of the people like Ben and Mark, mm -hmm. so they get back to um, things pretty quickly. Um, that's always uh, a, a good thing that I can post up a solution that they said, oh, we've been trying to figure out that one for quite a while and here I've found the solution for them. So it's a bit of a... Um, Kudos to be able to help out a real programmer sort out a problem. Um, yeah, and um, I, I think you may have have uh, attended a, a campfire or two in person on Friday. Uh, yeah, that was about one o'clock in the morning. Yeah, so that's I'm sorry about that. It's pretty miserable, but uh, so um, you, you might. It sounds like you're one of the ones that follow along. Um, I watch each of the one, each of the campfires and the cafes. So that's where I get a lot of the ideas. Yeah. Um, or I, I see Ben or Mark talk about jQuery or SQL, and having to do a lot of things that way. So I've had to teach myself or go to find out how to do more with SQL. So. Each of the, um, a lot of the forms that I will have will do multiple functions or a, a grid will have two different types of SQL in it to do two functions instead of one in an effort to reduce the number of forms on a page, reduce the number of grids on a page. So listening to the guys talk about how to do things has been quite uh, useful instead of sort of stumbling around in the dark. So, um, well, and, and I know as well. I know that you've submitted a topic or two. Uh, I, I hope that when, when that happens, that we cover things that, that uh, yeah. are useful to you. But uh, I, I just love that group because uh, week by week, I see problems get solved. That uh, you know, when, when it's like having having ten more minds being able to work on your project. Just focus for a minute on and give you ideas about a particular thing that you're facing. So. Yep. Yep. I'm glad that you're seeing the value out of I certainly do. So how could we have made your journey better getting from here there to here? Um I think that one of the struggles was was the initial bootstrap three. I was trying to get a nice skin design, so that sort of delayed everything, but that was a, a slow point initially until Bogdan pulled the switch and going, now we're going from three to five. And when that happened, everything sort of happened quite quickly. Mm -hmm. um, for me, it's more of just the the time to be able to work on it. Cause I'm still trying to run a, a busy practice at the same time, but that's nothing that uh, you guys can fix. Um, the advancements that you keep adding, uh, that's the bit I always look forward to. And so there's lots of feature requests, which are, would all make the system a lot better. Um, you you um, mentioned that you've optimized your application and, and actually have a phone app that, uh, and, and that's yes. a direction that, that we're going now too, uh, hopefully to, and, and I think as far as I understand it, it's in a similar vein using a, a, a web view to- Yeah, so- play. Used a component off the um, .NET Nuke store, so it was already a, a pre-made um, sort of module that someone had made, which we've then customised um, to then add in. So we've got uh, facial recognition on the iPhone, we've got finger, uh, fingerprint recognition on the Android. So for a security factor, um, the phones do the push notifications. There's always been little hurdles as with um, uh, like Android updated something on Firebase with the new uh, the new OS version. So a push notification suddenly stopped working on version 16, but worked on version 15. So there's always little challenges, even with the mobile app, which is outside of the, the platform. Mm -hmm. But the beauty about the platform is that 
I can go, well, I want to change the look of the, the screen for the, the mobile. Um, it's as simple as working on the page, using the responsive parts to then change how things get displayed. So that it's the advantage of that sort of web view um, sort of hybrid app over a purely native app is the uh, rapid changes that can be made. I was going to say, that, um, go, going back to which kind of this whole theme of what you're doing, the, the, the closing the, the distance between uh, wanting to make a change and having it in place, uh, that's one of the things that keep coming up in this conversation. Yeah, the, this sort of current screen here was, that was sort of changed in the last couple of days. That's how quickly things can be changed within the platform. Well, good. What's, what's next for your app? Uh, the next thing is getting it out there to the different practices. So I said I've been using it myself. Uh, I've already had sort of feedback from the patients, so we've changed the way people log in and probably some more changes to be made there. But again, that can be made on the site side of things. Sort of improving the flow so that it's easy for someone to pick up. So. Um, I've got a practice in Townsville um, and hopefully a few more surgeons up there. Um, some surgeons down in Victoria that are um, uh, looking to try it out, some surgeons in Sydney. So it's just getting it so that they can use it, um, try to have it so that a patient can pick it up and make use of it without having to go to a support screen to know how to use an app. And also the same thing, a secretary could click on it, log in, see the screen and figure out, oh, this is how you do things without having to watch an onboarding video. So, mm -hmm. so what we've been striving to achieve is how do you make a platform where you don't need a customer support to say, well, this is how you do it. It should be, well, I open it up and it's just like everything else I use and I click this and I see my messages and I've just got to click on the button to then display my message or uh, see the task. So having it as sort of complete as possible um, to minimize that sort of need for a lot of like a huge uh, support team. Uh, there's, there's no question that when you invest your time and thought into laying it out that way, you can, you can, uh, achieve wonderful things. Uh, it, 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 it takes a lot of effort to make it real easy for the users, but that's, oh, it, it's, it's, that's where a lot of the time's gone into it. So I don't know, it's like even just this displaying the message on the screen, like we've just come up with, okay, well, that's where we're going to place it now, instead of having a, a messages section so that people aren't sort of clicking around the site as much so that we're trying to have as many things as possible capable of happening on the one page. So from the patient's page, as soon as you pick the patient, you can do everything you need to do with that patient. You can create their appointment, modify it, message them, task them, instruction them without having to leave the one screen. Absolutely. So you could say like a, a single page application um, type design. Yes, but uh, and 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 so it's evident that you're putting that that thought into it and and evolving, right? Yep. So you, you do it and then you do, do it better, and and so that fast evolution loop uh, makes it possible. Well, great. All right. Well, I want to thank you for taking the time to uh, to show that to us today, and. Um, uh, Anthony Cadden for joining us on the Low Code Cafe. We will uh, look forward to um, since we can't, since you're, since we're putting laying this up as a, uh, a recorded session. There may be a few questions, and uh, we will uh, post them back to you and, and uh, hopefully get a response. But um, yeah. well, what I'll um, if I know when it's going to go on, I'll try to attend the campfire on the Friday night because it's uh, means I can sleep in on the Saturday morning if it's a bit of a a late night rather than a Wednesday night because I've got to be up and seeing people the next day. <laughs> well, and, and you guys always schedule us first thing too early in the morning anyway, right? So first for surgery, so you got to get up early. 
Um, yeah, this is almost certainly going to uh, to air on uh, January 11, so the 13th is, is probably when we'll be talking about it at Campfire, so that would be great. Um, I may even be able to be online because, uh, no, I won't be able to because I've got to see people the next day. The 13th, um, I should be able to be on for the uh, low-code camp, um, campfire. Well, we, that'll be perfect. We'll look forward to that. Anthony, I'm going to uh, stop our recording, but thanks so much for, for doing this today. You're welcome. All right, we're joined today in uh, the... <laughs> yeah, looks, uh, thank you all for being here. I think it was uh, very, uh, very inspiring to see... All right, we're joined today in uh, the... Okay, cool. It was very inspiring to see uh, to see another success story from uh, from uh, uh, our customers, uh, as Dale mentioned and uh, and Anthony mentioned. On uh, we'll we'll continue the conversation on uh, campfire this Friday. Uh, thank you all for being here. Looking forward uh, uh, to seeing you again Friday and uh, next week another uh, interesting session, which I think uh, I. I'm not sure if I should do a spoiler alert, but I think it will touch on some subjects that uh, were discussed today and are, are coming in the product. So next week, make sure to, to uh, book your calendars as well. Thank you all. Have a wonderful uh, day, evening, morning, uh, whatever is in, uh, is in uh, your location. Bye, everyone.